more to the story. This is a Fox 47 special report. Your kids, drugs, and our community. Hi, I'm Jonathan Walsh from the Fox 47 News at 9. Now, for the next half hour, we're going to be talking about a very important issue, and that is the impact of drugs and alcohol right here in our own community. But more importantly, we're going to talk about solutions that work for you and your family. We have a very unique guest with us in studio. George Valdez, formerly headed all of the operations for the Medellin drug cartel in the United States. He was responsible for 95% of the cocaine that came into our country in the late 80s and early 90s. Today, though, George's life is 180 degrees different. He's now making a huge impact on the lives of young people all around the country. George, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Jonathan. Up front, we want to tell you and, and all of our viewers at home that, look, we're not condoning anything that you've done in the past, and certainly we hate the things that you did in the past. Mm -hmm. um, we're not glorifying any kind of lifestyle with the millions of dollars that you had, but the main reason we want you to tell us your story is because you were a kid. And that's the interesting thing about the message that I try to bring to kids across America and really to parents is that we think that only bad things happen to bad kids. And when we look at a kid that's been in jail or is going to jail or he's hung out on drugs, we say, well, you know, that's a result of the environment he grew up or abandonment. But with me, it was totally different. I come from a very good home. I come from a, a home of extremely high morals. Uh, my mother was a very religious woman, and we were very, very hardworking people. I never used drugs in my life, never smoked, uh, never used alcohol. And at the age of 16, I was the youngest employee in the federal government. So you had the support there. Why did you get sucked into this lifestyle and the drugs and so forth? And you know, uh, Jonathan, as I talk to kids across America and, and they connect with me and I can see exactly where they're going to, I look at uh, what I consider to be America's number one enemy and that is the message that our society brings to our kids and the message that we sometimes as parents innocently without even knowing uh, portray to our kids and naturally they just follow along and that is the society has whatever you need to make you happy. And it will boil down to material possessions. Uh, we worship many, many things in this world, cars and, and houses. If we have a little house, we want a bigger house. And we're constantly told, and I remember coming from Cuba at the age of 10, and, and immediately being told, listen, whatever your emptiness is, however you feel about life, don't worry, we have the answer. And we look at it and we say, well, uh, drugs is, is the problem and alcohol. And, and those are all symptoms and, and results of the same disease. And that is that we feel that we can be happy by what the world has to offer us. When it doesn't, then we're devastated as it happened with me. With me, I felt like, hey, if I can make a million dollars, I could start my own business, I would be a happy person. I could provide all I want for my kids. And the more that I can give my kids and them not go through what I went through, the happier they will be. Little did I realize that as I look back in my life now, I adore my father. And the day he died, I realized, you know, he never gave me nothing because he didn't have anything to give me. Mm -hmm. He gave me his presence, his love, and he gave me example. I made the decision to sell out to the message of society. I suffered the consequences, and my life drastically changed as a result of one decision, one day, not a process of many, many bad friends or bad influences. It can look good on the surface. I mean, you had it all. You had the millions of dollars. You had the, the women. You had the cars. It is a problem, though, when you boil down to how hollow you felt. Talk a little bit about that. And, you know, I tell kids as I look at them and as I uh, do all kinds of events, from gang rally to school assembly, I say, look, I was everything you ever dreamed you want to be and you will never be, and I am everything. With me, it came to a point where I got everything that I wanted in my life. I mean, I thought that originally if I just had some money, I'd be happy. Then if I had some cars, then if I had a bigger house. And as we see people, I mean, how many houses can you live in? How many uh, drive, cars can you drive? I got to a point in my life that I looked around and everybody wanted to be like George Valdez, and I wanted to die. And I couldn't figure out what to do. How could now society has told me that what it's got to offer will make me happy. I have it all. I make a million dollars a month. I hang around with the, the, my role models. I mean, we make role models out of people that in essence live a very empty and devastated life like ours. So when we see them fall, naturally creates a path for our kids to follow along and fall. 
And in essence, I remember speaking before Congress and having a congressman ask me, said, Dr. Valdez, do you think that drugs are devastating America? And I said, you know, Congressman, I believe that the devastation of the American family is creating a drug problem in America. We as parents are very reactive. We're constantly reacting to things. We're ignoring the symptoms. And it boils down to we need to make this nation what it became a great nation. One nation where, under God, where the family was the core, where we eat as a family, where we discuss issues as a family. And uh, we have abandoned that symptom in search of, well, if I can give my kid a car when he turns 16, hmm. or if I can give him a summer home, that'll make them happy. Then why do we have this phenomenon in America that every 18 seconds a teenager attempts suicide, and it's all in upper white middle suburbia America? Kids that have everything, and they come to me, Jonathan, constantly, one after the other, and say, look, we have everything. I live in a million-dollar house. Uh, this girl that, uh, when I did the governor of Indiana's prayer breakfast, she said, Dr. Valdez, I live in a million-dollar house. We belong to every club that there is. My father's respected. My mother's beautiful. I jumped a third-story window hmm. taking my life because if this is as good as life gets, I don't want no more. Put that in a culture where suicide is, is a glorified, then that's the result. Now, you've talked a little bit about this in interviews in your book here where there were signs that you should have gotten out much earlier than, than you did. There, were, there was a contract out on your life. You mentioned that you slept with a gun underneath your pillow and 10 bodyguards around you. What was the final straw that broke the camel's back that said, man, George, I've got to get out of this? You know, first was a mother praying for me for 10 years that God would change her son to be the child. I, I didn't believe in nothing religious. I didn't believe in anything. I believed that I could be God, that I could change the world, that it was over to me. But it was getting to a point and realizing, look at this. Everybody wants to be me. I have everything. Why do I hate everything around me? Why is it that I hate women when I have a mother that I adore? Mm, right. Why is it that everyone is nothing but a toy with a price? Getting to that point in my life and then seeing the death of my bodyguard, uh, murdered in, on my behalf and seeing his little daughter telling me, you know, uh, my dad went to be with God. And I'm looking and saying, you know, if there is such a thing, what we're doing is not going to get us there. And then finally, the final uh, straw was my little girl knocking on the door one day trying to get into my room and I was partying with some Hollywood celebrities and she got out of her room and at 2 o'clock in the morning, she was 2 years old, and calling out to me and me realizing that, wow, here's the only thing left in my life that is pure. My little girl, if I open the door, I'm going to contaminate her. And I would not open. I felt filthy, dirty, corrupt. Finally, when I went outside to see what she was doing, that she had gone back to bed, she was by the floor crying, and I said, I have to change today. And the consequences are real. That's one last thing that we want to make sure we tell people. You spent 11 years behind bars. You were tortured by uh, other cartel. You know, it, it, it is definitely something that maybe kids don't understand. You know, and, and that's critical and important to get across that. I've changed my life. God's given me a new chance. I get the opportunity to bring messages to cities across America. I speak before Congress. But every day, I live with the consequences of the choices I made. I have broken homes now. I see my kids now that I pray that we don't follow in the same path of destruction that I did. I see kids that are dying, dying of drugs. Yeah. Uh, and, and I live with those consequences. And they're going to be with me. And it's important that they're with me because our life can change. We will change. We can make a difference in our community. But we will suffer the consequences of our choices. And thank you for trying to make a difference now, turning around and telling kids your story and getting them so far away from this lifestyle. Uh, you'll be talking with uh, some schools and some students in our area, and we appreciate you joining us tonight.